Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website. It's WayneD.com and today we are going to look at the most recent phenom to join the PGA Tour right off of the uh, PGA Tour University class of 23. That would be Ludwig Aberg. Made it onto the Ryder Cup. He won in Europe. They put him on the team. Worked out good. He was two and two. And he just won at Sea Island and he shot 61 61 on the weekend, <laughs> which I don't think's ever been done. Uh, part of it was just hitting shots like this over and over. I mean, literally, it was stuffing it. So he finished 29 under. He made one bogey. So we got a couple of good uh, camera angles. The one on the the left here, the the camera that the uh, tour uses is usually a little bit higher up in the air. And uh, probably the same thing over here on the on the face on. Usually, if it's hard to tell if the camera's moving around, I'll put a line on one of the one of the things in the picture. And as you can see, it doesn't really move other than up in the end. So. That just that makes any line that would be on top of his head, uh, it's going to end up, you know, down here. But uh, so we'll just leave that one off. But we can get some uh, interesting stuff, and I got some some other angles too. But on these, I can at least draw a couple of lines. Now, one thing you can see, and is remarked on all the time, is how smooth this all looks producing 183 miles an hour of ball speed. He's got that that perfect modern golfer's build. He's 6'3", 190. Um, and anymore, none of these guys are weak. They've been in the gym. So the colleges are all getting their guys up early in the morning and they're all working out and optimizing. When you get to this level you've got trainers galore, uh, you got just about everything of an entourage to optimize what you're doing and again this is 2D this is not 3D so these are observations made by the eye and when the camera is fixed you can get some ideas of of what might be going on at least at least before you could measure absolutely everything and this is how we did it but I still think this has merit alright so let's let's talk about this let's take a look at this face on driver now one thing you're gonna note right away and I see this more and more is that the hips are going to move to the right in the backswing along with the head oh yeah and check out his grip uh, the right hand looks completely neutral but that left hand grip is strong so you're going to expect with a grip like that that even if he rotates his forearms in the takeaway the club face is going to appear to be slightly down. So I got some slower ones. It's about here. I got some slower ones where we can kind of kind of look at the face. But that's just a, that's just the nature of what happens. He would almost have to to get the toe up. He would have to fan the club open, and he's not doing that. It's just a pretty neutral takeaway. So we can see the the rightward movement is going to be right at the start. His head's going to move about 
an inch, inch and a half. His hips are going to go with the head about the same amount. Now we're going to get past P3, heading to P4. Hips are still to the right. So as the club changes direction right about there, that right hip is still right up against the wall, even though it's starting to move left. And we still have a little ground to make up over here on the left side. So you can imagine that you were measuring foot pressures that the foot pressure is probably going to work itself slightly outside of that right foot. And when we look at it from down the line, you can see immediately, and this is with every swing you'll see of his, that right hip pocket is going to end up deeper than that tush line. It does it every time. It's not a huge amount, but it's there every time. Now that gives the knees a nice balanced look. He does not lower a whole lot in the backswing, and that's something else you see these days looking for a little more distance is a little is a little more raise in the backswing, although he's not really raising up. If you get deep in that hip, you're increasing that right hip flexion a bit. So you can expect the head to drop just a fraction, mostly up. Now this is where it gets interesting with Aberg's swing. So if you look at it from the front, because his, I think his pressure is a little bit on the outside of his right foot, that's going to initially retard the movement of that right leg. So you're going to see his knees move apart momentarily before he really gets into that right driving. So that movement really, he, he can be pushing off the right foot, but if he's pushing off the outside of the right foot and rotating, it's just going to take that right leg a hair longer to get moving, but you can see he's got plenty of movement. Now normally, if you look at the advance of the, of the pelvis, see the hip slide. Uh, pretty common with a driver, not as big as it would be with an iron. And you can see the hands, if I draw a line up from the ball, the hands have plenty of room to release the club so he's not going to get way in front of it coming down. So he's going to catch up to it. He might have a fraction of forward lean on the hit. He's probably not hitting up on it as much as some guys. Because he, he had a nice, uh, I'll show you one where he hit a nice low big cut that still went 300 yards. So you can see his head has dropped considerably, but remember the lines went up. So I really shouldn't have put that line up there. It should probably be about there eventually. This one's a little jumpy. So you can still see that grip. It looks like the logo or the grip's pointing up at his nose and the club face looks like it's squaring up pretty good there. So he drove the ball better than anybody that the week that he won last week. Now here's where it gets kind of interesting. Look how level he pel his pelvis got here in the in the transition. So his head is going to back up a 
he's going to level his pelvis out. He's going to maintain his depth. See, his left hip is still left of the line, and so he's well back in the box. And his secret sauce, I think, and what makes him so good is if you look at where the hands are and where the shaft is coming by, it's almost precisely on the shaft plane that he started on, which yeah, it's not a, a necessity, but when guys do that, they usually hit the ball pretty good. So I was trying to think of people whose hands come in like super low like that. And one guy I thought of immediately was this guy, VJ Singh. So he's about the same height, I think, 6'3 for VJ. Pretty similar takeaway. Pretty similar look at the top. Let's go back to the top. See Aberg's wrist is neutral at the top. Definitely not bowed as the swing du jours have gotten where they want that wrist inflection at the top. That is not inflection. And it's not into flexion immediately in the downswing, nor is VJ's. So VJ will shallow the club a little bit more. But watch where the arms and hands are on the approach there. And then if we look at, at Aberg, so you don't see too many guys with that right forearm almost right at the ball. very rare. Most guys come in with the left arm less vertical and the left wrist bending down to get the club on the ball. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Of course, VJ had that crazy let go <laughs> with his right wrist. And then Aberg's way more conventional. So, let's go back And look at a couple of different swings. So here's one. It's just a little wedge. Looks like he's playing pebble. Number seven. If you ever played that hole, it's about the coolest little hole ever. So here he's just going to hold the face a little more down, take a little half swing at it, but you can still see the wrist is in extension there, and it starts down, it maintains that. So he's not really going to be a guy with that grip to, to turn the wrist way down into flexion. So you can, you can get a sense for that backup. Let's see if I got another. Here's a good one. So let's watch. slow-mo. Now he's only 24. Already had great success. It's going to be a lot of fun 
watching him butt heads with Scheffler and the rest of the gang. But if he hits it like he did at that RSM tournament, he's going to be tough to beat. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention also is is the left foot. You can see that left foot going <laughs> flying backwards. That's so becoming so much more prevalent now. So as he levels his pelvis, it's interesting. Most people that do that they shoot the right leg out from under him. But one of the ways to keep the legs moving back is to let that left foot just fly out there. So that pushes the right leg up, up and in. And that's a nice compensation for, you know, what I would consider would be less than optimum movement starting forward. 